Amen. So I have one one announcement for you. Um, welcome to my home. Yeah, come on. Bless those that are watching online. Um, we're excited that you're online and joining us. We bless you. Yeah, right. Thank you. Um, this, how many of you guys are, are taking discipleship or have taken discipleship? Mm -hmm. Have yeah. taken discipleship? Yeah? yeah. Like you're excited about it? Come on, yeah. Have you told Come on. anybody about it? Uh, Amen. Yeah. How excited were you when you're up here for your graduation now? When you complete something, as, as as somebody recently completed something, it was hard work put in, right? Oh my gosh. She did training. So this young lady over here, you'll see, had placed herself in a physical demand. But when we place ourselves in a spiritual demand, God is giving us eternal nutrients. There's things for eternal value. And discipleship simply is what you're speaking about. There's seeds there, right? So we have the graduation. It's the last Saturday of this month. Amen. Amen. A graduation for me is like the men that the guy saw in his trees. So when you see them up here holding a certificate, I'm like, hmm, what tree are you? Amen. My God. My God. That's good. That's good. How are you branch? Is you good? What you need over there? Wow. Huh? You see what I'm saying? And that enables you to have an understanding to, to know what we're speaking about instead of being lost. And it's also a good time just to re up if you want to visit. There, if somebody asked me this question, by the way. I know Elder Jen isn't here, but you would see Elder Jen to um, just discuss discipleship classes. But, uh, you know, I want to go to a class. I said, go ahead. Come on. I've been to it. I want to go again. Is that okay? I said, yeah. You don't have to pay a credit fee or anything like that. <laughs> you give what's freely given. Amen. 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 I'm going to have Pastor Ryan for this next announcement. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Well, let me make some noise for you. Amen. 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 You know, one thing I, I love about being a part of the kingdom is understanding the principle of the law of exchange. The law of exchange says, because you've released, I'm going to give you more. That's good, that's good. And every time that you exchange, you receive more. That's, that's why even, it, it works even with people who aren't in the church. Right. That's why you have a lot of philanthropists that the more they give, the, the, the richer they become. That's right. Yes. It's a principle that whether in church or out of church, it still works. So if you can see a work for the world, my God. why can't the kingdom benefit of it? Especially when where we give becomes strategic. My God. It's not just giving to give. <laughs> giving to give, amen. But well, how about giving strategically? And I also believe in, in, in windows and time frames. And right now we're in the season of thankfulness, amen? Yes. We have a holiday that's about to come up. Yes. Thanksgiving, right? Yes. Yes. Praise God. So the Flow Kingdom Ministries is it wants to take advantage of the window that's open right at this moment. And uh, um, we, we're partnering up with an organization along with um, uh, De Deacon Louie, um, who's, who's uh, being intricate and, and, and working with us to do so. We're looking to donate a minimum of 50 turkeys to families who are unable so, um, the number, the number we're looking to hit is at least, at least fifty. That means if we hit fifty, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going because the Lord is not only fifty families that are in need, and we know that we serve a God of abundance. Amen. But this is what we want to do. We ourselves don't only want the opportunity to sow. We want to give everybody here the opportunity to be a part of this and to be able to sow. Amen? So what we're, what we're asking or what we're opening up the opportunity for, I want to word it like that, because we, we can ask of it. 
But we're asking you, we'd be asking you to do something that benefits you. We're opening up the opportunity for you to be a part of sowing into families who are in need. Jesus. And we're asking for a minimum donation starting this Saturday of $20. $20 my God. If you can give $20, you know, then, you know, you can more than more uh, incredibly bless wow. families who are less fortunate than we are this year. Wow. Amen? Wow. wow. That's good. Amen. Praise God. Good. 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 Amen. Um, and if you don't have $20, can I find somebody that has 10 uh, Hey, where two or three are gathered. Oh, come on now. In his name, so he is there. Absolutely. So if, if you if you're unable to give twenty dollars, you know, you can partner up with somebody else to give ten and ten. We do a ten and ten. Let's find three people yes. and go five, five, ten. Yes. Whatever you're able to give, and even if you're not able to partner up with somebody, yes. we're asking for a minimum of twenty. You know, we, we want people to at least aim for twenty, yes. but obviously anything that you give is greatly appreciated. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Let me pray, Pastor Brian. Come That's over so here, good. Really quick. I know. I know you wasn't used to. Uh, you wasn't seeing that. Can I get this pulpit down? Yeah, yeah. Quick? Come on. Amen. God bless everybody. How's everybody doing? Amen. All right. It's Thursday. All right. We, 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 we you know, had some bumps and bruises to get here, but we here. Amen. That's right. Who came to get fed? Amen. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Amen. So we do this the the correct way in this house. Amen. And I want to present this young man the right way. My brother. Amen. He has brought food from the heavenly throne that God has given him. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. He has cultivated me and many of us here yes. as a pastor, as his calling, but most of all as a brother. Yes. Amen. 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 He has been here from the origin. My God. Amen. From Amen. the origin Amen. of the flow. Amen. You know, he shaved a couple pounds. Hey. Ah! But amen. Guys, the tool for tonight, Pastor Brian. Amen. amen. I, uh, I didn't expect such a, I felt like I should have been coming out running. Like, <laughs> you know? Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. How's everybody doing? God. Uh, before we get started, I want you to turn to your neighbor Amen. and bless them. Hey. Say, I bless you. Hey, I'll bless, bless you. Amen. I bless I, I, you. I, I, now, I, I want you to get out of your territory. Amen. Bless you. I got to take the six train now. And, and go to the farthest part of the room. Go to where the person is the farthest part of you and go and, and, and bless them as well. Amen. <laughs> Amen, praise God. God bless you. Amen, amen. 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 Now, uh, again, the good problem to have, right? Getting everybody back into their seats after sharing so much love. Amen. Um, and as, as we make our way back to our seats, um, I'm, I'm going to ask something of everybody here today. Obviously, those who are able to, um, some of us may not be able to for um, different reasons. I'm going to ask that just get a little bit closer today. If there's a seat open in front of you, I'm going to ask of you. Yeah. Like this whole row right here? You know, come on, guys. Now, I don't want you to feel forced. Pass the Eli, put the whip away. Okay. All right? All right. I, 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 don't, I, I don't want you to. I was almost able to, to use forced, it. But this is what I do want. If, if, if we're going to say that we're going to come to the table to eat, I, I, I don't want you to come as a drive through I want you to come to the table and dine in. Yes. Amen? That's good. That's good. That's good. Position is everything. That's good, Pastor. Amen. Wow. Position is everything. That's good, Pastor. Where you position yourself is vital come on. based on your need. Amen. Hey. If you desire water, 
you're not going to position yourself in the desert. Oh, come on. Mm. My God. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. You're not going to, 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 to position yourself in a barren place when you're looking for plentiful fruit. That's good. Come on. So, you know, when we come beyond even tonight, when, when we come to receive the word, you know, I, I remember when I, when I first came, you couldn't keep me from the front row. Hey, my come on. You couldn't keep me from the front row. Can, can I be honest? There were certain leaders at the time when I was fresh that used to feel a certain way, that would feel a certain way because I would run straight to the front. No mm. And I'll be okay if you move me, all right, but at least I'll position myself somewhere where I know I'm going to get splashed. Amen. 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 Let's get that. The best place <laughs> when you get on those wild water kingdom rides yes. Yes. is the front, right? right? Because the water comes splashing, it hits you, right. you get wet, right? right. So you want to be there in the front to experience yeah. everything. Amen. Let that be here as well. Amen. 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 You guys ready for this run? Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. Thank you, thanking you, my Lord, for this word that you have uh, placed before us, for this food that we are about to eat, the food of angels that you have decided to serve Amen. upon your people. And not myself at this moment, Lord, simply submit myself to you as an instrument to, in, the, in the hand of the maker of all things, my Lord. I ask that what you desire to create and write within the hearts of your children here tonight, it be written, my Lord. Be the Alpha and the Omega, even in this moment, and let your teaching flourish and, and, and penetrate and permeate upon our souls and in our hearts. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, um, I want to say first and foremost, you guys are such a beautiful people. Come on. Yeah. I, I love looking at, at the mosaic of people that we have. We have such, such a, a, a different type of people. You know, I can look at one side and I can see one type of people. And then I can look at the other side and I can see another type of people. Wow. And it's not awkward. Wow. We celebrate our differences knowing that our differences combined make us unique as a whole. Yes. And I love that. Amen. You look around, you know, we, we have we have professionals, you know, we, we have marathon runners, yes. you know. Uh, Come we, on. You know, we, we have handymen, Amen. you know, we have people off the street, you know, we have so many different types of people. And the one common denominator, we all love Jesus. Yes. Yes. That's a fact. Yes. Amen. Amen, amen. I, I want to start off by um, uh, sh sharing um, uh, my experience um, this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, and they are greatly, greatly missed already. Um, Pastor Lewis and Pastor Yahira um, yes. are, for the next three weeks, are going to be with us. Amen. They are on a well-deserved vacation. Yes. Amen. 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 Listen, if, if there's anybody outside of mom and dad that I can say work diligently and strongly within this ministry without sleep and without complaining, it's them. Yeah. And outside of mom and dad, they set such a standard for the rest of the, of, of the pastors and the leadership within this church. Wow. And um, you know, I know they're, they're, they're probably still resting because they're <laughs> they, they had a very, very long um, travel, um, but we bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, amen. Um, and I, I also want to take this time to acknowledge our spiritual parents who are currently either back or on their way back from their assignment in North Carolina. Amen. 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 So um, this is, amen. amen. Praise God. Prophet Israel, Prophet Daliman, Mom, Dad, we love you very much. Amen. We honor you. And, and this is proof of your work and, and, and just how... Uh, how great the work that God has done through you guys right, in us. Right. This is the proof here, where we have two tiers of leadership, the top two tiers who aren't here, and we are functioning Come on. as if they are here. Wow. Come on! Amen. Come on! I want you to understand something. Many churches can't do without the senior pastors being uh, not being at home. Come on! Right. Come on! Come on! We have both the senior pastors and the executive pastors who are not here at this moment. Right, right, right. Amen. 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 
Come on we're now. Here. We're Come here. on. Hey. Praise God. Hey. So, back to the story, right? Um, both my wife and myself, Pastor Nat and I, uh, we got up at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, this morning, and uh, we went over to, uh, to to take Pastor Lewis and Pastor Yahara to the airport. And uh, on our way, uh, we're, we're driving, and we cross the Triborough Bridge. They're, they're going to LaGuardia. We're, we're driving through uh, Triborough Bridge, and uh, we get to the other side. Um, I haven't crossed the bridge in, in quite some time, and I actually didn't notice that the speed limit, as soon as you get off the bridge, drops down to 40 miles per hour, right? right? Some of y'all looking like, for real? Is that? <laughs> I, I probably just saved you guys a ticket yeah. too, all right? Yeah. So the speed limit drops to 40 miles an hour, and you know we're making good time, but we're driving, and um, I'm kind of feeling like I'm going a little bit slow. In my mind, though, I'm thinking that the speed limit is regular wow. 50, 50 miles per hour. So as I'm driving, there's a, it's dark, there's a car that pulls up behind me and is uh, pressing close to me. So I, I look and I look at the, I, I don't pay much mind. I drive a little bit faster and then the lights go on and I realize it's a cop. I didn't realize it was a cop at first because it was very dark. So I'm thinking, okay, he's just gonna pass by me and keep going. So I, I move over to the, to, to the right lane and he goes behind me. Uh oh. And then my wife goes, is he pulling us over? And I'm like, it looks like he's pulling us over. He ended up pulling over. And uh, the, the police officer um, walks up to us. Not a police officer, let me correct myself, a state trooper. Yeah. If anybody's been, has anybody been pulled over by a, speed, uh, a state trooper before? Yeah. <laughs> has anybody been pulled over by a state trooper and walked away without a ticket before? Uh, no, for nobody. No, okay, then there's a couple, okay, okay, okay. Um, so <laughs> right. we pull over, great prayer. and they had great prayer, angels on point. <laughs> it is almost impossible for you to get pulled over by a state trooper with those, those three hands that I saw stayed up. I want you to know how fortunate you really are. Amen. They're Amen. very, very fortunate. Amen. Um, it is nearly impossible to be pulled over by a state trooper and walk out without a ticket. Right. So, um, you know, the, the state trooper comes up to it. First, he takes his time. You know, they build the suspense. And, uh... <laughs> You know, he's sitting in the car, and we're there. We're like, okay, is he coming? He's not coming. He finally gets out of the car, he walks over to us. I'm like, good morning, officer. No smile, no nothing. License, registration, insurance. Okay, not a problem. I'm gonna reach into my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> my wife goes, she starts looking for the uh, registration and the insurance, I give him my license, and uh, you know, I asked him, officer, um, um, you know, if you don't mind me asking, um, oh, can I know the reason why you're pulling me over? And he goes, um, you were speeding. I'm like, speeding, officer? He says, uh, yeah, um, do you know how fast you were going? I was like, I was going about 55, maybe 60, you know? Again, I'm thinking that's slow, right? That shows right. you how I, right. don't judge me. Don't none of you judge me, all right? I want to see you behind the wheel. Wow. <laughs> Praise God. So, um, you know, he, 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 I tell him, you know, I was going about 55, uh, maybe say, like, you're going over 60 miles an hour. I'm like, oh, so sorry, officer. I didn't even feel it with this car, you know? And for some reason, the whole time, I felt like I wasn't going to get a ticket. Like, everything was going to be all right. So, uh, you know, my wife is looking for the um, registration and the insurance. Looks at my name. And he goes, uh, um, how do you say your last name? I say, just how it looks like, a road trip. And then like he goes, okay, I said, listen, it's, it's fine. My name's been butchered all my life. And he <laughs> chuckles. He goes, yeah, I didn't want to butcher it. I'm like, listen, it's perfectly fine. So as my wife is still looking over for it, I look. And then I look back at him. I said, that's how I know she loves me. And he goes, huh? I said, because she's willing to put up with a name that's going to get butchered for the rest of her life. <laughs> He, he starts laughing, right? So then um, he asks, whose car is this? I said, oh, it's, it's my wife's car. I'm gonna throw out a little bit of our dirty laundry, right? Our glove compartment is a mess, right? <laughs> so he makes a joke, he goes, yeah, you, you can kind of tell whose car it is because the woman's car is always, I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, uh -oh. it's my car, uh -oh. you know? 
So my um, closet is clean. Her closet is clean. Her closet is clean. Amen. Not mine. But then you look at my car, my car is clean. Right. Right. There's a difference between men and women, uh -huh. right? Don't judge me. All right. So you know, at, at the end of it all, um, priorities. You know, he um he lets us go. Wow. And I think back and I'm like, hmm, what really made the difference in that? And I like to believe that based on the name that was connected, mm -hmm. that name opened up a series of conversation. It's all about who's, who, who you're connected to. Wow. Amen. I start this off like this by um, reminding everybody to stay connected no matter what. Yeah. Amen. You know, your greatness isn't measured based on only you. It's based on who you're connected to. Yeah. Amen. Oh, that's good. A, a stream itself is not great. But when the stream connects to the river, now that river becomes powerful. Amen. A raindrop, single raindrop that falls is nothing. But a raindrop that falls into the ocean becomes part of such a powerful body of water. That's good that can become a tsunami and destroy wow. based on power. Oh my God. Remain connected. Amen. 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 That's good stuff. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now that uh, I'm, I'm done with that, share that, uh, we can get into the teaching. I want to jump in today's teaching. Um, you know, again, and yes, this is a teaching, so I want to make sure that uh, I, I know that the ushers are already on point. Uh, you know, I know the media team already on point with the mics out. Awesome. I love it. Um, I want to I want to touch on a oldie but a goodie, amen. amen. Um, and I want to touch on tonight the laying on of hands. Um, I, I want to I want you guys to understand just specifically what happens. Why, when you come up for prayer, is it that we uh, we place our hands upon you? What happens in the transaction, and what can be both the benefits as well as the dangers? Of the laying on of hands, amen. amen? amen. I, I want to I want to start off by uh, first explaining that a, a lot of people feel like the laying on of hands is a, is is a a, a in depth and 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 uh, deep revelatory teaching, but believe it or not, the Bible says something different. It doesn't mean that it's not powerful. It's not a powerful revelation. But the Bible actually tells us that the laying on of, uh, of hands is a foundational teaching. Right. In other words, we shouldn't be in the faith 10, 15 years and still not understand what the laying on of hands is all about. In fact, the laying on of hands is one of the things that the church should know as a paramount teaching as we move forward in the walk with Christ. Amen? Wow. So I want to turn your attention to uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Verses 1 through 3. Okay? Um, I am very zealous and passionate about teaching and empowering the people of God. Amen? And I, and I fully believe that this teaching is one of those that can literally shift just your everyday, uh, uh, how you manifest heaven on earth on your day to day. Oh, I want you guys to understand, when you go to the hair salon, when you go to the barber, that if you're not smart about it, there's a transaction that happens that negatively affects you. Wow. Right, you guys get it later. All right. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. So let us, stop, let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely... We don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds. As a matter of fact, repenting is one of the first things that we learn when we come to the walk. Right. It's the very first thing you do when you accept Christ. I repent of my sins. Amen? It's one of the very first things that you do. And that's the most fundamental thing you learn. Repentance. All right? Repentance of evil deeds. And, and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instructions about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. 
And so, God willing, we will move forward to further understand. <clears throat> you know what this lets me know? It lets me know that there should be a, and this is what it did to me personally. I'm going to show what it did to me personally when I read this. When I read this, it let me know, okay, there's a certain standard as far as foundational understanding that I should have based upon this scripture. And what I started doing, I would read this over and over again. And I would ask myself, do I truly understand repentance? Do I truly understand the, 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 the significance and understanding of baptisms? Do I understand eternal judgment? Do I understand the resurrection of the dead? Do I understand the laying on of hands? Mm. Can I be honest with you? You know, don't think that I figured it all out in one shot. This is part of your relationship with Christ. This is part of your relationship with Holy Spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit is the one that continues to teach you. If you read something and you say, oh, wow, I understand it, and you think that that's all that there is, hey. you don't understand hey. anything. Hey. Hey. You don't understand anything. I guarantee you that even now, I dive back into these topics and God will show me something new. Amen. As many times as I've studied them. Wow. Bible never gets old. It never Amen. gets old. So I, I, I want you guys to understand that, you know, it, you know, for some people, the laying on of hands is, is very deep and profound. And yes, it's deep and profound, but it's also foundational. These are one of the building blocks of your faith. These are one of the things that are going to give you the advantage in your every day-to-day -day walk. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay, so what do we use the laying on of hands for? Well, there are a few things that we use it for. If you're writing anything down, write this down. The first thing we use the laying on of hands for is for commission. Yeah. Okay? We lay hands to commission. We also lay hands to appoint. Now, commission and appoint are two different things. Right. When you commission, you send out. When you appoint, you assign within. Mm. Big difference, okay? We lay hands to bless. Come on now. I know you're going to love this one. We, 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 we lay hands to heal. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes, we even lay hands to deliver. Mm -hmm. We lay hands to transfer and impart. All right, so let's dive into this, okay? Uh, let's go to uh, Numbers number 27, verses 18 to, 20, to, uh, to 23. And I'm going to show you guys both in the Old and New Testament uh, the examples of the laying on of hands, the significance. Uh, the laying on of hands wasn't just an Old Testament thing, and it's not something that uh, just showed up after the, um, in, in the book of Acts when, uh, when, the, when the church was born, they didn't just say, okay, let's try this and start laying hands on everything. They, this, the, the, the laying on of hands was something that was from the very beginning. Amen? Amen. Numbers 27, verses 18 to 23. The Lord replied, take Joshua, son of Nun, who has a spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. Pre present him to Eliezer the priest, before the whole community and publicly commission him to lead the people. Transfer some of your authority to him so the whole community of Israel will obey him. When direction from the Lord is needed, Joshua will stand before Eliezer the priest who will use the, the Urim, one of the sacred lots cast before the Lord to determine his will. This is how Joshua and the rest of the community of Israel will determine everything they should do. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. He presented Joshua to Eliezer the priest and the whole community. Moses laid his hands on him and commissioned him to lead the people just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. So we see the laying on of hands as a part of commissioning as a part of, 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 of assignment for the future of the people of Israel, the, the Hebrews, right. right? There was a transference 
of authority that had been based on the laying on of hands. Good. Okay? So when, when Moses laid his hands, even though Moses was not yet gone, Moses laid his hands for a future event. Moses placed his hand upon Joshua and assigned him the, the task of leading the people of, of Israel upon, the, upon Moses' departure. Amen? Right. Amen. Praise God. That's, uh, that's commission within the Old Testament. You're going to say, well, that's in the Old Testament. Well, let me show you about the New Testament as well. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Yes, praise God, yes, praise God. Yes. Okay. Acts 13, verses 1 through 3. Yes. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, called the black man, Lucius from Cyrene, Menaean, the childhood companion of King Herod Antipas, and Saul. Now, I could dive into... Uh, I can dive into that. I'm going to leave it alone because we'll never get back to this teaching. Um, but you see that there was even influence of the Christian church within the corridors of the inner circle of King Herod, who was one of the greatest persecutors of the early church. Praise God. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Now you know why I like um, uh, what, it, what we just finished reading? It, 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 it correlates with what we read in, in, in Numbers. It wasn't a man-made decision. The commission of, of Saul and Barnabas and the commission of Joshua were not based on the, the other apostles and it wasn't based on Moses' judgment. It was based on a command that came from God right. while they were seeking diligently the, the, the guidance of God in what the next steps would be for the church. So they're, they're, they're praying and fasting. They're seeking the Lord, and the Lord speaks to them and says, okay, now that you have sought me, because how many of you know, so you waiting around for God to give you an answer, you know, and just saying, well, God's going to give me the answer. No, sometimes you got to seek God. Sometimes you got to say, you know what, Lord? I, I, I need to be persistent with you. I know that you're here, but I still got to seek you. I need a little bit more from you because this is great to me. I need to seek you a little bit more. What... What you treasure is based on how much you see God for it. Amen. Wow. You must not really value That's good. whether it's an area in your personal life, whether it's an area in your professional life, whether it's a, an area in your ministry life. You must not really value that position if you don't see God to, to excel in that position. Ooh, wow. Wow. That's good. All right? Hey, wow. it's, it's scriptural. It's in the word. They were seeking and God spoke to them and said, Commission Saul and Barnabas for the special work right. that I have for them. So you don't get commissioned just to get commissioned. There's an assignment. Amen? Amen. I, I love what, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm picking on you today, Deacon Louis. Like, it's, you know. <laughs> Amen. Um, Deacon, Lee, Deacon Louis said something very powerful up here. I think it was, uh, was it last, last uh, week or the week before last Saturday or the, the Saturday before that? Um, he said, you know, I, I don't go anywhere without Dad sending me. Right. Amen. I'll call Dad and say, Dad, listen, you know, I got this call to do that. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And if Dad says don't go, he doesn't go. So true. If Dad says go, my son, he goes. And you know what? based on the blessing that he carries, beyond what he himself carries, not to negate what he carries, but beyond what he carries, because he's been commissioned to go, and he's obedient, God honors that. Amen. That's good. God honors the assignment behind it. Amen. God. Amen? Amen. Amen, amen. Oh so that's the first. God commissions based on uh, the laying on of hands. Laying on of hands is, is vital in commissioning. Praise God. 
God also, um, um, laying on of hands is also used to a point. All right? Um, any questions so far? That's amen. good, man. Pretty straightforward, right? Good. Amen, amen. That's not so good. Let's, let's yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen, amen. amen. All right, we'll get there, right? A point. Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Praise God. So I, I want you guys to know, because sometimes, so, sometimes we see people praying and laying hands, and we think, well, what's the purpose behind laying hands? Like, why can't he just, he, he just pray for that person? Why does, why does it always have to be a laying on of hands? A minister connected to the Spirit of God will not lay hands just to lay hands. Yeah, right. A minister connected to God, listen, okay. in this house, as people sit here, I have ministered to people lined up in front of us in this very, in the very front here, have ministered to people, and without laying a finger on them, they've fallen before me. Right. And people have seen me do this. And not only I do this, this is to show you that it's not always, if God doesn't say to lay hands, then don't lay hands. Come right. on. Come on. You know when, when, when you hesitate, you be like, well, let me just lay hands anyways, when you don't really believe it's God doing it. Ooh, Amen. That's good. That's God, good. God. And that's where you have to be careful. That's where, you, that's where the danger zone is. Don't, we'll get there. Praise God. Jesus. A point, Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. And we got it. That's what I'm talking about. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows are being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the Twelve called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the Word of God, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the spirit of wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can, send, can spend time in prayer and teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmen, Parmen, uh, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch who was an earlier convert of the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The numbers of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. So the laying on the hands is not only for the work to be sent out, but it's also for the work to be done within when we assign or when we appoint uh, ministers here, one of the things that we practice is just this, the laying on of hands, the transference of authority, Amen. okay, within the house, authority based on the work. Amen. And I know sometimes, you know, listen, if they were, if this was here and now, based on the, uh, on the status of the maturity of the church now, I guarantee you these seven men were proud beyond proud to run that food program. Amen. We try that nowadays in, this, in, in the church? What? We'll be like, yo, who does this apostle think he is? Right, right. And what I look like, a cook? <laughs> what I look like, just, just some ordinary guy? I'm full of the spirit. Wow. Oh my God. Talk about it. Again, that's where, praise God, how many of you know this is full of the spirit? Amen. 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 It's always on point. Yeah, I said your name up here, Josiah. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. Sometimes we feel like, oh well, if if I'm acknowledged to be full of the Spirit, um, it's because you know I, I I should be up there and I should be preaching and I should be ministering and I should be the one laying on of hands. You know what the f being full of the Spirit does? It allows you to deal with people. It allows you to deal with people. You think those seven people had it easy dealing with all of the issues that they were dealing with? Right, come on. They had to be full of the Spirit to deal with the people. Amen. And dealing with the people doesn't always mean... See, you could, you could want to be the person in the spotlight. But not everybody wants to be the one behind the cameras and, 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 and want to be the one where nobody's looking to deal with the people. 
You need more of the anointing to deal with the people out here than you do to give a word up here. Oh, Yo. that's good. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You need more of the anointing. You need more to be filled with the Spirit to deal with people behind closed doors, to deal with the ugliness that you see behind than the, than the spotlights up here in the front. You know one thing that um, uh, there's a trait within this house um, of, of all the pastors and, and, and ministers? Um, it's not that we're uncomfortable with public speaking. We're uncomfortable with the spotlight. It doesn't mean that we're not able to function within the spotlight, but we don't desire the spotlight. Hey, hey, come on. And I always say this, the true anointing of a pastor is not coming up here. This is the easiest part. Me coming to you and giving you something that I studied is the easiest part. I do this in POW every Wednesday. I sit down with people. I sit down with my mentee, and I give him the studies that I do. I sit down with my, with my men with, and here, I, I sit down and I teach. I love to teach. This is the easiest part for me. You know what's difficult? Is when you're, with, when you're dealing with the ugliness of a person. Yeah. And not to say that a person is ugly, but how many of us know we all have ugly issues that have to be dealt with? Yeah. I came with ugly issues. I'm, I'm sure I still got some ugly issues that dad still deals with when, when it comes to me. Right. All right? right? But he, his love, the love that he carries allows him to deal with the issues that are within me. Amen. And this, this is powerful. Amen. Amen. And it's, it kind of reminds me of when Moses had uh, the responsibility of Israel where he was crying out to God and was saying, Lord, the, the people's burden is heavy upon me. And what did God do? God deposited the full spirit of Moses upon many others. So in with dealing with people, there's a level of being fully in, in influenced by the Amen. Ooh, this is good. Uh, fully fully in uh, in influenced by the spirit to deal with humanity in its nature. You know, understanding the POW, I just, you know, big, big up the POW, you got to understand the nature of God and know that everything is spirit influenced to deal in, in its full, to deal with humanity to its full capacity. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, that just kind of reminds me of Moses when they had a deposit of, of his full spirit to others so that they can deal with the people. And I, I'm glad that you brought up the issue with Mo, uh, the, the situation with Moses because both this story and the story with Moses both bring up, um, they, they both touch on, or, or there's an emphasis with both of those stories. Um, you know, when when the, the when the assignment, the appointing happened, um, it freed up Moses, it freed up the apostles oh, to do the work that they were called to do. Oh, that's good. And it didn't make the uh it didn't make the men who served under them lesser as men mm. amen the word is clear the word is, everybody knows that the word said god has no favorites amen. Right, right god doesn't favor people mm. but god favors assignments yes so god has favored assignments now it doesn't mean that because you have a lesser role in the assignment god doesn't favor you based on the assignment your assignment within this house helps to uh, alleviate pressures to mom and dad up there for them to do what they have to do, then praise God. Amen. Guess what? You're a part of whatever they're doing. When they're going out and they're laying hands and they're ministering, right, right. you're a part of them. That's good. When they go out to, to Cuba and they go out to Puerto Rico and they go out to Colombia, you're out there also. We're a part of whatever they did it in North Carolina because we're holding it down here. Hey. We're a part of that right now. Okay. So, I, I don't care if you're vacuuming, I don't care if you're, if, if, if you're cleaning the toilets, I don't care if, if, if you, you consider yourself, quote unquote, just an usher, which by the way, being an usher is awesome, yes, uh, you, you know, I, I don't care if you consider those positions as lowly positions in comparison to, you're part of the assignment of the flow. Amen. And when you're a part of the assignment of the flow, guess what, you benefit of the assignment. That's good. Amen. The mouth of babes. Amen. Listen, you know, my wife turned to me after we drove off, after the cop let us go, right? The state trooper. He says, the grace that is upon your life. <laughs> the very person he said, the Amen. grace that is upon your life. I said, praise God. Because I understand where my grace comes from, being connected to the assignment. Amen. Wow. 
connected to the assignment here. So there, there, there are, there are areas of grace that I benefit from. Things that I didn't have to work for. That because I am part of the Flow Kingdom Ministries, I, I, I commit myself to the assignment. Look at this. I offer, I give my tithes, my finances are tied to the assignment of the Flow Kingdom Ministries. Come on. Outside entities that try to steal what is meant for this house can't touch it. Amen. Oh, man. Come on. Listen, I just dropped the jewel on you. I taught you. I just taught you how to protect your finances. Come on. Be a part of an assignment that is prevalent to the purpose of God. Tie your finances to something that is prevalent to the finances of uh, to, to the purpose of the expansion of the kingdom. And because you've committed to the expansion of the kingdom, that which is not of the kingdom can't get in there. That's good. You guys get it. My God. I, 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 I believe, Lord, let them receive it in Jesus' name. I believe good. you're going to get it. Praise Amen. God. I think some of you got it. Amen. Did you guys get it? My God. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Bless. All right. We lay hands to bless. Let's go to Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Okay? And um, blessing, I like to call it the interim testament. Guys, don't go looking into the Bible for where it says interim testament. The Bible says Old Testament and it says New Testament. <laughs> I myself like to call it interim testament because that's the, the, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's, it's a transitional point. Yes, I am, in, I am fully aware that there, there's a Old Testament, the shedding of blood New Testament. I am fully aware. I just like to call it the interim testament. Okay? Put those stones down. Hey, right. hey, hey, right. that was good. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> that is a t-shirt. We were talking about that the other day, right? Yeah, we were talking about that. Oh, man. What, what verse? It's uh, Mark 10, verses 13 through 16. Amen, amen. Interim Testament. I'm going to stay with that. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. Even there, we see a, 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 a level of zeal. That zeal isn't always good. I'm, I'm, I'm zealous to teach, but I measure my, my zealousy. Amen? You measure your, it's, it's okay to be zealous, but um, not to the point where, let, let me rephrase that, it's good to be passionate. Amen. I'm passionate about teaching the word. Amen. Right? When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God, like a child, will never enter. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. Guys, I, I, I want to um, emphasize this. When Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, he's not talking about the kingdom of heaven as far as salvation. Um, what he's talking about is the manifestation of heaven here on earth Thank you, Lord. as the kingdom of God. So when you read the kingdom of God, uh, know that that's what he's talking about. Amen. 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 Um, so we see Jesus once again blessing, okay, placing a blessing upon the children. You can lay hands. You can lay hands and bless your household. You can uh, bless your vehicle. You can uh, bless the children. You can bless your spouse. You know, um, upon authorization, of course. If you're, if you're married, of course, you have authorization to bless your spouse. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, question for you. Yes. In, in speaking about that scripture, about coming as a child, children are people who are under authority. Like, the, at the most authority. Like, I can't do anything without asking for permission, right? Like, the kids in the house here. They come to me, I'm like, whose kid are you? You know, and they're like, can I use the bathroom? I'm like, yeah, hey, use the bathroom. You know, I don't know, like, can I play outside? Like, no, you can't play outside, where's your mom, you know? Right. So children are always asking for what they can do because they're children. And so I guess Jesus Christ, you agree that Jesus Christ is telling us 
that even when it comes to laying of the hands, it has to be done under authority, asking to move in the in that kingdomness. You are absolutely right, Deacon. Um, can I share something with you? The truest measure, uh, you want to know somebody who really understands authority? Someone who's under authority. Amen. The greatest measure of a person with authority is someone who can submit to authority. Amen. That's right. Anywhere you go commissioned by God, you're, you're under authority, but you have authority. 100%. Your authority is based on who you're connected to. Wow, that's yeah, good. Amen. Amen. That's good. When you go based under your own authority, and I, I see a hand back there. When when uh, when you see some when when you move somewhere based on your own authority, then all you're going to do is get your results. Oh, that's right. good. And listen, if you're gonna go get your results, don't expect much. <laughs> oh, don't man. expect much. Ouch. When you submit to the authority, it's a different story. When you submit to the order. Okay. Listen, the kingdom is a hierarchy, man. The kingdom, is, can I share something with you? I've shared this before. The kingdom is a government. Yeah. All right, we talk about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a paradigm. The kingdom of God is a governmental mentality, okay? Yeah. The kingdom of God is not a democratic mentality. It's not something that's governed between a, a, a majority vote. It's something that's governed by way of authority, being submissive under authority. When you understand that principle of the kingdom of God and you understand who you're under. Oh, man, I'm getting past Oh, man. Right? When you understand um, who you're under and you understand because I'm connected to that person, I can reap the similar resu results because I'm an ambassador. Jesus. Because I'm an ambassador of the kingdom of God, I'm representing the king of that kingdom. Oh, and because an ambassador doesn't go anywhere without being commissioned by the king, by that authority. An ambassador that moves outside of commission is not an ambassador. Yes. It's just so schmo. Yes. Right. That's all it is. Well, where are your papers? Where are your orders? Well, um, I know the king. <laughs> hey. A amen? Amen, but where are your orders? Who sent you? Ooh. I don't know who sent you. Can I share it with you? Can I share it with you in the Word? My God. Acts 19 talks about uh, uh, the, the, the seven sons of Sceva. Mm -hmm. Sceva was a high priest who uh, his sons, seven of them, were going around casting demons, casting out demons, or attempting to cast out demons. They came up to this demon-possessed guy and they said, you know, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, we command you to come out. They weren't commissioned by the king. They weren't, con they weren't con commissioned by the authority of that kingdom that they were trying to, to, to execute the power off of. Right. You know what the demon said? I know Jesus. Yep. And I know Paul. Mm -hmm. But who are you? Yep. Let me tell you, the end of that story doesn't end very pretty. <laughs> One demon-possessed man leaped on those seven men, leapt on those seven men, and beat them so badly that they ran away. And the word wanted to emphasize this, they ran away battered and naked, mm -hmm. stripped of their covering as they were running out. Hey, hey. Because it was a false covering. Hey. So now we have to expose you wow. for trying to come in under wow. a false covering. Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. That's That's good. Good. That's Oh, understand the power of leading. Uh, uh, understand the power of being commissioned, not doing things in an unauthorized manner. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. My God. My Praise God. God. You're doing good, Pastor. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank you. My God. Praise God. Amen. Oh, we had a hand up. We had a hand up. Yes. And forget about you, my brother. Some people worship Moses, like Jewish people. They don't work, they don't they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Why is it like that? Because I I witnessed to some Jewish people and they said I'm Jewish. I can't acknowledge who Jesus is. I don't acknowledge him. Why do you think it's like that? 
I, I, I believe, and you know, um, I, I, have, I have Jewish friends. I have a, a, a very, very, very good jo a Jewish friend uh, um, who I befriended by, by way of work. Um, and we, me and him, we talk every day. And it's funny that you say that. Um, I, I told him, look, you know, um, th there are some things, as we have conversations, and he says some things that are very kingdom. And, you know, and I say, you know, I, I told him today, you know, I don't, I don't evangelize to you because I understand how devoted you are to your faith, you know, but, you know, just know that if you ever want to come to the Flow Kingdom Ministry, there's always a sea waiting for you, you know. Um, and we talk about we talk about God rather often, you know. Um, he know, he knows that I'm a pastor. Um, I, I tell him he he came with me to an event, um, the um, the multi faith uh, um, health summit that um, that I went to a couple of weeks back, and um, he actually got to see me open up in prayer um, at the event, and he was inspired by it. And, you know, I, I, I hold these words dear that he told me. He said, you know, your faith inspires me. And that means a lot to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I said, you know what's crazy is um, a lot of people would see us as, as, as very different. You know, I, I, I do know this. We, we both serve the same God. Mm -hmm. We serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, you know, I, I stand on my faith in Christ. We still serve the same God, and we can always meet at this point, and I think that's what's great about our relationship. Um, I think that, you know, they're, they're convinced at what they believe in based on the Messiah not yet coming. They don't, they don't, they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But I, I, I want us to remember that they are our brothers in faith. They are brothers in faith. They, we believe we, we serve the same God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Amen. So um, that's my belief in it. They just haven't received the revelation for whatever reason. Uh, they, they haven't been able to attain it, and that's and, and that's fine thus far. Amen. Amen. I hope that answered your question, Theo. Okay. All right. Awesome. So um, yes, uh, healing. We lay hands to heal. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. Right, did I read that? No, I didn't read that yet, right? Okay. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. 16, 17, 18. Thank you, Lord. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. How many of you believe? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Oh, so this, this applies to everybody here. If you raise your hand, it applies to you. How many of you look, how many of you here believe? Amen. 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 They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They'll speak in tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. I had, a, I had an incredible encounter today, earlier today, with a, with, with a lady. Um, I, I, I work for um, a home health agency, and uh, it requires me to go into um, hospitals and doctor's offices. And today I was in Lincoln Hospital, and I had a great conversation with a woman of faith who unfortunately was in the hospital. And uh, I walk in, and she's laying in bed, and I, I introduce myself, I tell her, listen, you know, um, I, I represent the agency. We just wanted to, I wanted to be the face of the agency and let you know that we are here for you. And upon your leaving, we're going to reinstate your care. And, um, you know, we had a little bit of a conversation. She told me some of the things that were going on with her, and I heard her out. And then she turns to me and she goes, are you a Christian? <laughs> and I look at her, like, you have that moment where you kind of go, okay, Lord, you're doing something. And... I, I, I looked at her and I bent down a little bit and I go, I'll tell you one better. I'm a pastor. Hey. <laughs> the look at this woman's face was so overjoyed because nobody, and, and not, to, not to judge the church, I don't want to judge the church, nobody from her church, nobody came to see her. My God. Come on now. Don't judge the church. 
for whatever reason. We don't know the conditions of why nobody went to see her. But nobody went to see her. And here comes little old me, who has nothing to do with that area of her life. God will sometimes do that. And, you know, I, I spoke to her and I said, you know, this, this isn't a part of my job description. I want to pray with you. And she was like, oh, please. And, you know, I, I, you know, I pulled up the chair next to her and I held her hands and, you know, we prayed. And, you know, I, I told her, you know, God right now is looking at you in a way, in, in, in the way of his original design. Even right now, God is manipulating the time of the cells inside of you. And he's reversing things. And your organs are coming back together the way that they should. And it, even now, the healing is taking place. I believe that you believe. She said, yes, I believe. I said, praise God. My God. Why? Why am I saying that? I believe she's going to walk out of that hospital even tomorrow. Praise God. Praise God. Believe. Not for me. But these signs will accompany yes. the believers. So if I, if I go to the courtroom of heaven and I go, I present this case. By what standard? What what you know? What evidence do you have to provide this case? Well, the word says it here. I believe. So based on me believing, I will place my hands upon the sick, and they will be healed. Ouch! Come on. Listen to this. Could I have placed my hand on her head? Absolutely. Hey. You know what I did? I grabbed her hand. Come on. Oh, you got Held her by the hand. Because even though she would have allowed me to, Come on. I also understand authority. Come on. I'm not her immediate covering. Hey, hey. I held her by the hand. That's good, Pastor. And as me laying hands on her head, it would have been the, it's the same thing as me holding her hand. Because I truly believe it's not where you touch, it's the touch itself. Yes. Amen. Now this Specific touching do specific things, absolutely. But I'm affecting the whole body. Mm. So as I'm holding her hand, her hand is on top of mine. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the light transition from my hand onto her hand and traveling through every single tunnel of blood vessels in her body. And the anointing affecting her body. I said, that issue of blood that you have, Look, I sound like you right now. I sound like you right now. Oh, you all in my right. stuff, man. He so said, that issue of blood that you have, that issue of blood was taken at the cross. Jesus! Do so you believe that? My God. She said, yes. I said, the, 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 the water, you know what her condition was? She had water in her lungs. Wow. wow. Do you know how Jesus died? Yeah. He died by drowning. When you crucify, water fills your lungs and you drown. I said, Jesus died in this manner so that you, will, you may be healed in this manner. Jesus. Ooh, good point. There's a praise report. She's coming out tomorrow in Jesus' name. Hey! And, and I, I want to say this. She spoke great things about her pastor. She wasn't bitter or anything. It, it, again, this is why her, she goes to a, a Trinity Baptist Church. And I, you know, shout out to Trinity Baptist Church. I, I love the fact that we can celebrate each other even though we're in different churches. We can stay connected and acknowledge that we're all part of one body. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know, praise God for them. Wow, that's good. You know, she spoke great things of, of, of their pastor. Praise God. So um, let's go to Luke chapter 4, verses 38 through 41. Another healing. Luke chapter 4, verses 38 through 41. After leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's house, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever and it left her. And she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what the diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Many were possessed by demons, and the demons came out at his command, shouting, You are the Son of God. But because they knew he was the Messiah, 
he rebuked them and refused to let them speak. So, what am I saying by that? My God. If you lay hands, understand that it's not really you laying hands, it's God through you. If, not, if you're saying, I'm going to lay hands, then you're going to get your results. Right. Let Jesus lay hands through you. Yes. I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures for you guys to read on your own. Write this down. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. Lord. I'm going to read the last one. Okay, so write that down, Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. And uh, I want to read James 5, 14. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Do you know, based on the scripture alone, that if you come up when the elders are called to pray for you, just the fact that you came up and completed with this before we even lay hands on you, you're already healed? Amen. Amen. Wow. That's good. Listen, it could, it could be the least of the least up here praying for you, right? The least of the least, right? The least of the least praying for you. And just because you you said, I'm sick, I need to be prayed for by the elders, you come up and you're prayed for by the elders because you're obedient to the scripture you're already here. Wow. That's good. Wow. That's good, Amen. Pastor. Amen. Deliver. Lay hands to deliver. Luke 13, verses 10 through 13. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been she had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. Amen. You know, this lets me know that not every healing is a healing. Some healings are deliverances. Right. Mm. Some, some healings are tied into deeper issues. Right. And you want to know what the what the most sickening spirit is? Unforgiveness. Yes. That's Unforgiveness right. is the is the is the spirit that causes the most infirmity within people. Yep. Right. Unforgiveness. That's good. Unforgiveness rocks you on the inside. Yep. Unforgiveness causes that your 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 body to malfunction because your body wasn't caused, it, it wasn't formed, it wasn't created to hold unforgiveness. Oh wow! You know what unforgiveness is like? Unforgiveness is like smoking a cigarette, or smoking cigarettes. Have you have, have any of you guys seen like those videos where they demonstrate what happens to your lungs after repeated smoking? Right. And they'll take like twenty packs of cigarettes. And they'll they'll pump twenty packs of cigarettes into a bottle full of cotton, and they'll siphon the air out. And when everything is done, it's like the cotton's all black and tarry. Mm -hmm. Every cigarette is unforgiveness, mm -hmm. an unforgiveness issue. Wow. And what that ends up doing is the same thing as what cigarettes do to your lung. It blackens. Yeah. It blackens your body. That's good. Amen. Wow. Now, uh, we also lay hands to transfer and impart. Okay. Women, when you go to the hair salon. Men, when you go to the barber shop. I'll be honest with you, you know one of the reasons why I went bald? I'm not bald today, but you want to know one of the reasons why I went bald? I couldn't stand people who are unauthorized to touch my hair. <laughs> be completely honest. Mind you, my brother's a barber, right? You know, and my brother does great work, by the way. Go see him in Castle Hill, right? Um, well, got you, bro. So, you know, <laughs> my brother's a, you know, he's a great barber, you know. But I, I, I just didn't like the fact that I, you know, that I didn't like people touching my head. I got so used to, um, you know, those who were authorized to touch my head, to touch my head. I said, you know what, I can't take it no more. I'm going crazy, I'm tired of, you know, covering myself before going in. You know, if, if you gotta do what you gotta do, go ahead, by all means, you know? I, I, listen, I suggest, you know, pray over yourself. Take a little bit of oil, you know? If you don't have anointing oil, take a little bit of olive oil. You know what anointing oil is? It's olive oil with fragrance. A little bit of cooking olive oil, just a little dab, you know, 
Pray over yourself, Father. Cover my head from all transferences in the name of Jesus, my Lord. May nothing that is not allowed by you transfer onto me. As a matter of fact, Lord, let the anointing that is upon my life transfer from my hands to the hand to, from my head to the hands of those who will touch my head, my Lord. Let my head not only become a receptor, but let it also be a giver in the name of Jesus. And let whoever it is touching my head be blessed by your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I just gave you guys a prayer. So when you guys when you guys go do your hair or whatever, you know, pray something to someone. That's good stuff, Pastor. You know, cover yourself beforehand. I'm, all right. How many of you have gone to the hair salon or to the barber shop and you walked out in a completely different mood than the way that you walked in? Some of y'all front right now. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all fronting right now. You got a headache. But amen. You walk out with headaches. So how about this? You walk in with in, in a good mood and um your hairstylist or your barber is complaining about something. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, you have to, while he's while he's cutting your hair or while she's doing your hair, you know, you somehow find yourself complaining about something out of nowhere, instead of being the voice of encouragement in the midst of that situation. You know, an unauthorized laying of hands will, will cause you to forfeit God's purpose for why you're going there. Wow. Because you didn't cover yourself. Amen. That's what the enemy looks for. Amen. I haven't even read the scripture yet. All right, Leviticus 8, uh, 16, verses 20 through 22. Good question. Forgive me for asking this, but um, the whole laying of hands on the head, like I never ever was taught that anywhere else. And I don't think that I fully understand. Um, I understand transference, but I'm not, like I, it, it doesn't register why, like I've had people here think you don't have anybody touch your head. And I'm not sure that I fully understand why. Right. So can you elaborate please? Uh, let's, let's see if, um, this scripture actually um, uh, helps you out. Like you asked it right in time. You ushered in the scripture. No, it's great, great. Um, switch your microphone. You know, if you want to stay with the microphone for a second, maybe this will answer your question. Uh, Leviticus 16, verses 20 through 22. When Aaron had finished purifying the most high place, the most holy place, and the tabernacle, and, and the altar, he must, pre he must present the live goat. He will lay both his hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the wickedness, rebellion, and sins of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sins to the head of the goat. This is where we get the term right. scapegoat. Right. Uh, maybe you've heard the term scapegoat before. Yeah. This is where it comes from. All right? Um, then a man spe specially chosen for the task will drive the goat into the wilderness. As the goat goes into the wilderness, it will carry all the people's sins upon itself into a desolate land. So when, when, when you lay hands on people's heads, there's, there's an exchange that's going on. The person that is placing their hands on the head of a person, or in this case, we see Aaron uh, placing the hands. And listen to this, he's not only placing his hands on the goat's head, there's also him speaking something into the goat's hand, into the goat's head. So he's confessing over the goat's head all the sins right. of the people of Israel. So when your hairstylist or your barber is touching your head and he's talking some filth or she's talking some gossip and you go home and all of a sudden you're dealing with images in your head that you shouldn't be dealing with or thoughts that you shouldn't be dealing with, where do you think that's coming from? There is a speaking and transferring going on as the hand is placed on the head. And, and that's why when Jesus laid his hands on the children, he blessed the children. Amen? He blessed the children. Amen. I see two hands. One and two. I hope that, that answered your question. All right, great. Thank you. No problem. We have portals, so our head is a portal, our hands are portals, our feet are portals. So even when you're getting a manicure and your manicurist is 
is, you know, just in a bad mood and moody or whatever, like you have to cover yourself because that is, there is transference taking place there because there is a receiving and there's a giving. Same with your feet or when you're going to get massages and you, you know, you're getting uh, pampered, you need to be very careful what that person is carrying and really covering yourself because something can be taking place if you're not aware of it. And if you're not, knowledge is power, obviously, and in our discernment, we have to be on point with our discernment. So whenever, I'm not saying that you can't go to the spa and get massages or get manicures, especially for the women. We live for that stuff, right? But just be mindful and, and be aware that like we are, sometimes we get so caught up with just being humans and, oh, this feels good, oh, I have my nails, and they're gonna look cute, oh, my hair's gonna look nice, oh, self-care, I'm gonna go to the spa. But we're not be, being mindful that there is a transaction taking place in the spirit realm that we have to be mindful. That's good, right? Patrick. That's my boo. <laughs> uh, Claudio and then, uh, Pastor Eli, absolutely right. So, you know, she touched on, on, on the hands aspect and the feet, and I, I like that she even threw in uh, the spa, because even getting massages on your back, all of those things, she's absolutely right, they're portals. Pouring oil. Even, it, huh? Pouring oil. Yeah, and, and, and pour, pouring oil, you know. Pouring oil. Amen. So, you know, all, all of those things have significances, you know, and they open up spiritual portals within you, she's absolutely right. How about this, even your actions, what are you doing with your hands? Yep. Wow. Come on. Wow. Wow. Amen. I hope you guys got I it. Did. I, I got it. You. I got it. I got it. Hey, uh, I understand, you know, uh, I, I was at the barber shop the other day, so it's this is perfect for me. Um, my question is this, they, they were Jamaican. I didn't understand what they were talking about. Now, I, you, can you still pick up that even though you're not understanding the words that are being said around you? If, if I pray for you in tongues, come on, wow. and you come up here and I lay hands on you and I pray for you in tongues, does uh, the fact that you don't know what I'm saying stop you from receiving? No, I, I understood that, but I wasn't sure if the yeah. other way around yeah, it, it works it, as well. It, it, it works as well. Okay. It definitely works as well, and that's something. Hey, amen. I'm glad that you brought that up as well. That's a great point. It's a very great point. Um, to be honest with you, um, when this uh, when this subject was brought up when we when I first came to the flow, my first reaction was like, "Yo, that guy got too saved. This is this, this is OD. Like, come on, my head. Like, really? Like, it's my head we're talking about. Like, there's some people that have a culture." that they grab people's head when they give a kiss. We're Spanish, we, so, that's the so, culture it's, about it's us. It's like, oh, okay, you know, they, they hug you, and especially my aunts, you know, my uncle, they're like, come here, and they grab me, and they, I'm like, uh, you know, now that I'm, um, now that I'm, now that I'm knowledgeable of it, you know what I'm saying? There are people that have authorization. My mom, to an extent, because I don't know what she's doing in her personal life, you know, but let's, let's give an example. A man that just beat his wife with, that, with his hands. It's the same barber you go get your cut at. Wow. Now you're wondering why you got relationships problems with your wife. Woo. The same hands that the dude, the, you know, sometimes I go to the barber shop and I'm with this guy, with all the respect, hopefully he wasn't doing some, some stuff sexually with his hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Lord, I bind it, right? But then we wondering, I'll I, I keep it 100 with you. I wasn't aware of that. And I'm wondering why I'm having uh, disputes with my friends and even um, not honoring my pastors because there was a transference of dishonor. The, there's a transference of rebellion. There's a transference of all these things that truthfully, you know, we're not looking for it. And that's what we get caught at. You know, we get snuck up. Uh, what is it? Uh, sucker punch. Sucker punch. You ain't looking for it. I'm at the barber shop. I'm chilling. You know, here you go. Here, here's some... Uh, 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 a lack of tolerance or uh, uh, right. uh, uh, anger issues. Here you go, buddy. Mm -hmm. Hold that. Oh, by the way, let me comb your hair down. I'm yeah. like, oh, and then I get out and I'm wondering why, you know, my wife is so irritating to me and all she's saying is where you're at. Now, what you mean, why am I? You don't have to bother shop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, with, with, to keep it 100 with you, it, it seems overstated. It seems religious. It seems like, come on, now the flow, y'all ODing. But, with knowledge, like uh, Pastor Natalie said, 
You don't know, if you don't know better, you can't do better. I'm not telling you that every person, oh, hold up, yeah. transferring, chill. You know, doing the karate shop on them. No, I'm not telling you that. You can be mindful of your word that Lord, I find the Lord Jesus died. So when people do it to me, and I know they're unauthorized, when they leave, <laughs> Jesus. You know, I, I just cover myself. It's, it's, it's not to be alarmed and be ex now you're being extreme about it. Yeah. We're, we're just saying that when uh, uh, be mindful. Th this is where what? Thoughts. This is where dreams happen. This is where your soul right. is connected to. Yeah. Why the head? Let's be honest with you. Yeah. Why the head? Jesus is the word of the church. The head. The, head. the, head. the body functions through the head. 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 Yeah. What you think you will act. So I, I got to be careful what I allow to penetrate through here. That's good. You know, and, and I just want to share that with you because it may seem like, dude, this is OD. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I, now I got to watch who, who I leave my, let, uh, let people touch my head. But that's how I interpreted it when I first came. And, and, and it blessed me. And now what happened when, um, when you, when, when, you finally say, you know what? Let me let me listen. I, I said, um, her and then uh, and then her. But but what happened afterward? When when? Uh, uh, truthfully, it, it it allowed me to move differently. I didn't look at people differently because that's another thing we can do that as Christians. We start looking at, oh, I don't know if you beat your wife with those hands. No, you would if, if anything, I'm doing what Pastor Brian said. I'm being aware of my barber. I'm having a social. Uh, I'm having a conversation to my barber that's imparting whatever I have right. into him right. spiritually. Is the is the unseen, and we if we think about it, is the things that are unseen that affects us. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if we're there, you know, it, it has blessed me, bro. It has blessed me. You know, my my coworkers, some people, you know, I strategically touch their head. They don't know it. <laughs> they can't bless unknowingly. <laughs> you know, because there's a good thing, there's a good part to it. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't get all the make the bad part. You need to see your son, your you see your son or a significant person having a bad day, you like, let me put some love in your head real quick. And they don't know what you're doing, but you're imparting it strategically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not all about the bad. Right. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. I had no idea. <laughs> I, I had no idea. <laughs> So now I'm saying I gotta I gotta be covering myself, right? But I found that I have this this thing about the transferring. Instead of me worrying about what's being transferred to me, mm, I hey, start hey. transferring yeah. who I am to them. Hey. Hey. Yes. Come on. Right, that's the whole point. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And my hairstylist is here. Hey. Hey.
whoever touches it after me, that they receive. Right? And I'm like, thank you. Get a word, I cover myself again because, of course, at work we have to cover ourselves. Because, you know, all those entities and all that. So I take my oil, I cover I even pray over my work. I say, Amen. Lord Jesus, that I I may be productive this day, that this day I can do my work and be covered and it all be fine. I even go to my director's door and I said, Lord wow. Jesus, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, I work in a hospital, so Amen. you know how it is in yeah. a hospital. So I'm like, Lord Jesus, that anybody that comes into this department, that they feel the peace that surrounds this whole department. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And I learned that. And I, I'm grateful, first of all, to my leaders, my deacons, my pastors, my elders that did show me that. Amen. So every day, even with my husband, Amen. I'm like, Lord, come Amen. here, puppy. Come here. Amen. 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 And I'm like, yes, Lord, hallelujah. I cover him. I have to cover my son, you know. And I've learned that and I'm grateful, first of all, to God and to my leaders to show me that. And of course to mom and dad because they showed you guys. You know, they're teaching you guys. So I just wanted to share that. Even my clothes, I learned that from Pastor Natalie. I have to pray over my clothes, my shoes, everything. When I go in and I try on a pair of shoes, the Lord. Amen. You know, stuff. Amen. Amen. Just one more show. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And now you have strategies. Yes. You're doing people's hair. Yes. You speak yes. blessings yes. into the church. Up. You say, Lord, because some people open up. That's usually the time where people yeah. open up. You you become their therapy for a moment. You become their psychologist even sometimes. A lot of y'all women that did that before, right? Yeah. You know? And you know, that's that moment that you connect with that person. You know, you literally let your hair down. And as you're doing their hair, you can speak, Lord, bless this person. Father, remove these issues. Father, impart on, on them supernatural healing and, you know, speak the kingdom of God into their lives. Let them be saved by your power and your glory in Jesus' name. And next time you see them, expect a change. Amen. Amen. Pastor, Praise can God. I piggyback really quickly off of Angie one second? Yes. It's, it's interesting that she said that about the leadership and about what we're learning. Um, it's interesting what, what Angie um, said about how much we've learned while we've been here. Because I too um, have been very intentional uh, in the mornings to lay hands on my kids and, mm -hmm. and you know, and pray over them um, with the oil. And um, one morning, I'm not sure what it is that I said to my daughter, and I was just like, you know, be careful. There was something going on. I'm like, be careful. You know, make sure that you're aware of what's going on, whatever, whatever. And she goes, Mom, don't you know that we're protected and we're covered? You laid hands on us. Sure. And I was just like, wow. Because see, we're learning here, but then we go and we put it into action. Good. And whether they believe or they don't believe, Good. the seeds right. are being planted. Amen. Amen. So Amen. 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 Listen, man, sometimes sometimes you need, can I be real? Sometimes you need a kid to get a grown up in check. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. 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 Amen. Listen, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't, don't just disregard whatever they say as imagination sometimes. Amen? Um, okay, um, we're going to read Acts chapter 8, 14 through 17. Um, I also want you to read, write this down and read this on your own time. Um, Acts 19, verses 1 through 7. Write down Acts 19, verses 1 through 7. Um, but we're going to read Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. I might have just confused you. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. So we see once again the transfer to the Holy Spirit by way of the by, by way of the laying on of hands. Amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Almost done, guys. Amen. I want to be mindful of time. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right. 
So um, I also want you to write this down, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. As a matter of fact, I'll read that. Uh, it says, Do not neglect the spiritual gifts you receive through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Okay. Uh, 1 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 14. Leviticus 16. Uh, Leviticus 16. 16. 16. Yes. 16 what? 22, 22. Thank you. Amen. Um, and let's go to uh, 1 Timothy. We're going to close out with this. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 5, verse 22. And we can stand for this. Amen. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 22 and um, I'm going to ask for the elders um, and for um, those who are authorized to minister to join their friend. Never be in a hurry about a wonderful church leader. Do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself poor, um, pure. Okay? Um, in the Greek it actually says never be in a hurry about the laying on of hands, okay? Um, when you're in a rush and in an unauthorized manner of laying on of hands, uh, it is possible for you to share in the sins of others, and let me explain that. It is possible for you to inherit or receive to you what somebody else is dealing with. Um, Um, it, it is very possible for you, because you're in an unauthorized state, to, when you're trying to lay hands on somebody, for you to actually end up receiving the issues that that person is dealing with. Why? Because you're unauthorized. When you're unauthorized, the, the level of protection that should be upon you is, is not there. Why? Because you're unauthorized. Jesus. All right? If I drive in an unauthorized manner down the street, I put myself in serious harm. If I grab a box that says handle with care and I handle it recklessly, I am in danger of destroying the package. So and this is what I wanna do. I, I wanna, for anybody who is seeking just to be blessed, if you need to be healed, if you need to be encouraged, if you just need a touch from God, I wanna invite you to the front. The ministers that stand before you do not only stand before you under their own court, they've been authorized first and foremost to minister. Who sent them is as vital as they themselves. Even more vital, should I say. We all have the ability to tap into the mantle of our spiritual parents. And that is the authority that we are ministering with tonight. That's how Dad says, don't look at me, look at God. He's commissioned us, and God has commissioned him. So we stand here under that authority. And I pray a supernatural blessing to all those that are watching by way of internet here tonight. We thank you first and foremost for joining us here tonight and watching this with us. We pray that you received every single word. And as, you, as, as you're watching there and now, whether it's by way of your phone, whether you have your computer, uh, your computer screen on us, or even if, if you connected your TV and you're watching us by way of your TV, whatever your petition is now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that you know the needs of every single person who's watching, Lord. Father, let them receive the blessings, the healings, 
Whatever it is that they are asking you for, Lord, we send your blessings and your anointing through the waves, my Lord, through the airwaves, through the internet waves, my Lord, for them to receive this in their spirits, my Lord, and let their bodies, let their finances, let their issues, let their, the situations that they are presenting to you at this moment become affected by your anointing. Let your kingdom invade their earth. And let the fruit thereof blossom. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.